In this video, we look to Germany as a possible leading indicator for risk assets. We will discuss why all investors should care about the performance of the German DAX and EWG ETF over the next three to six weeks. Both the S&P 500 and German stock market are relatively close to their 200-day moving averages. We review possible outcomes and strategy. The bulk of the video looks at DeMarc charts, identifying key levels and how they can assist us in managing risk and adjusting cash levels, either up or down. In this video, we will focus on the DAX. You may say, why do I care about the DAX? If you own risk assets or treasury bonds, for that matter, you should care about the DAX. DAX in red, S&P 500 in blue. Purpose here is simple. They're very highly correlated, and for the most part, they both zig at the same time, and they both zag at the same time. Why are we looking at the DAX here? The DAX, from a technical perspective, is a few steps ahead, maybe even two weeks ahead, of the S&P 500. So what happens with the DAX in the short run may give us an advanced look at where the S&P 500 may be heading. So if the DAX can hold some important levels in the next week to two weeks, the S&P 500 would probably do the same. Conversely, if the DAX cannot hold important levels, support to mark levels, then the S&P 500 would most likely do the same and go on to make lower lows in the weeks ahead. This is the S&P 500 index daily. These are shorter term moving averages, these thin lines. This is the S&P 500. This is the 200 day moving average. You can see its slope is still up. The point of showing this to you, these moving averages are moving down. At some point, they will most likely meet the 200 day moving average or price is going to come to the 200 day moving average. As of Wednesday's close on May 30th, we're only about 30 points away price-wise from the 200-day moving average. The point is something's got to give here. We're either going to hold at the 200-day moving average or we're going to break through. But some patience is most likely warranted to see what happens at near and around the 200-day moving average. It's possible we could bounce right off it. It's also possible that we could have some congestion and consolidation above and below it. We could also break right through it in a vertical manner like we did in August of 2011. Similar chart, now we're looking at the German DAX composite. This is the German stock market. As we noted earlier, the DAX is a little bit ahead of the S&P 500. The range between these moving averages and the 200 day in price it's a much, much closer cluster. We will get an early read or look at how the S&P 500 may react based upon what the DAX does in this area here. We're very, very close to an upward sloping 200 day moving average. We're in a good spot now. We've, we raised cash weeks ago. We've got a lot of cash on hand. We can do one of two things here. We can redeploy cash quickly if we bounce near 200 day moving averages or bounce where DeMarc counts would say it's logical to do so. If we break through these 200 day moving averages and we get them to roll over in a bearish or bear market like manner, we can incrementally raise additional cash until we see the markets firm up a little bit. This is a daily DeMarc chart of EWG, which is the German ETF, it has a high correlation with the German DAX. The mark charts are from Market Studies LLC. They're proprietary indicators and tools. What are we looking at here? This is a DeMarc support line that was broken here. In DeMarc speak, this signals a trend change. And as you can see, this was a good signal. This is very similar to what we looked at for the S&P 500 in previous videos. So this support was broken. This propulsion target, we broke through that. All things being equal, that's bearish. And today, on Wednesday, we also went below this propulsion target and below, it's hard to see, but there's a yellow dot here. These are all leaning bearish in the short term. Again, this is a daily chart. From a patient's perspective, and this aligns with the 200-day moving average that we looked at, 
In terms of DeMarc exhaustion counts, we're looking at the combo count on a daily. What you're looking for for exhaustions is nines, you get reversals, and a nine and a 13, you can get reversals. So where we are now on the combo count as of Wednesday's close, we've got a nine and a 12, which means we could get a nine and a 13 as early as Thursday, and usually within four trading days after that, within that window, you can get a pretty good idea if that 9 and 13 will be a meaningful signal relative to a possible reversal. As we've mentioned in the past, even if we blow through the 9 13, it will be indicative of a strong downtrend, and we'll get some good information out of that. Shifting gears here, we're still looking at EWG. Now we're looking at a weekly the mark chart, you can see there's a 9 off of the screen here that you can't see. Here's the 13 on a weekly chart. That was an excellent signal. We got a reversal with a 9, a reversal with a 9 and a down arrow. What's important to us now is we're on an 8 count. So if we closed at present levels, we would get a 9 and an up arrow this week, which would be similar to this 9 and down arrow here. And See, the market did stay up for one, two, three, roughly four weeks before it came down. So even if we get the nine up, it doesn't necessarily mean we're going to get a sharp reversal right away. We could get some consolidation. The other thing that's important is this thin line here. This is a DeMarc support line or a TDST line that is still in play. They darken up like this when you break them and it's a qualified break. In terms of EWG, the number that we want to keep in our back pocket is $19.17 on EWG. Breaking below it is negative, but breaking below it in and of itself doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a qualified break. You can see here it took one, two, three weeks before in DeMarc. DeMarc has a lot of rules. It's very specific before it would be considered to be a qualified break. But all things being equal, there's some support, and it can potentially be strong support. It's based on this nine count here. This aligns with being patient with the 200-day moving average on the daily, with being patient with the 9-12 count on the daily. We should be patient here. We could get a nine up on a weekly, and we also have what could potentially be strong support at $19.17 on EWG. If we break this, we still get good information, and the nine up arrow doesn't necessarily have to signify a reversal. It's what's known as a buy setup. We could carry all the way to a 13, which would mean we'd go quite a bit lower from here. It's usually a good sign when you get a nine up near these TDST lows or these DeMarc support levels. So this has a pretty good chance of hanging around this area and holding, it's at least worth exercising some patience to see what happens. Now we're looking at EWG on a monthly. Here are some of the DeMarc counts. You can see a 9 and a 13, major top on a reversal. A 9, there's an up arrow here you can't see, good signal. 9 arrow down, good signal. DeMarc can give some excellent signals. The counts aren't really what we're interested in here. On the monthly chart, we've got another TDST low. On the monthly, it's $19.31. So we've got monthly potential support at $19.31, which is another reason to exercise some patience to see how the DAX and EWG perform over the next week to three weeks. It should give us some good information relative to the future trend and direction of the S&P 500, and for that matter, for risk assets in general. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. 
CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.